Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Linda, the scrapbooking photographer. And today I'm going to share with you something that I found so exciting. It's using white embossing powder and stamping. And I'm going to show it as part of a layout that I'm doing for Stamping Like It's Hot. So this is a hop run by Brianna Spores. And we are asked each month to do something different with our stamps. This month it's embossing. So I'm going to do some heat embossing. I have my heat tool here and I have my Versamark ink and my little pouch and a few different stamps to use. Uh, we'll use those as we go through. The photos I'm working on are for Gracie um, when she turned two. So this is my gorgeous girl. She's actually behind me snoring at the moment. We had a really big day out playing yesterday. And this is her with her big sister Pippa. They're not related, uh, but they're sisters in our family. Since then, since Gracie turned two, we've also added Lulu to the pack, but this was when Gracie turned two, so we'll work with that. Working with animals, this layer is also going to fit the criteria for the YouTuber's um, video hop this month, which is April Animals. The colours I'm using are shortbread and jade and some white. Now it's going to be a white background. And I, these photos are bigger than normal, so I've gone for a 6 by 8 and a 6 inch square. So they're going to take up a fair amount of the page. Now I'm also going to trim this down so that we have the jade behind because I think that will bring out the grass. First thing I'm going to do is trim half an inch off two sides of the white. So that's pretty easy to do. So by trimming it off two sides, it means I'm going to get a quarter of an inch all the way around. And that just says doing a quarter of an inch on four sides, really. So there we go. Now I will gut the back of the green out as well. I'm just getting a bit of a feel for how the layout's going to look first. So that there, that there. Now the stamps I've got to use, are this one here I'm going to definitely use, it says happy birthday. And I'm going to put her name down here as well with some letters. And then up here I'm going to do a little bit of decorating as well. So I can speed the rest of this video up while we go through and I'll just season this happy birthday stamp before I place it where I want it to go. My intention is to have some room for journaling underneath it and then the name Gracie uh, down the bottom. I'm using the marker alphabet which are quite um, substantial letters so we certainly know that it's a title. What I'm going to do is space these out and do the happy birthday and the Gracie at the same time. So I'll just get the spacing right and then I'll double check it with the photos to make sure that I'm fitting everything into that gap that I've got down in the bottom left hand corner. So as you can see it's uh, nicely square there with a, the same amount around the top left and the bottom right hand corners. So just make sure everything's the way I want it. And I've purposely gone for crooked letters for Gracie so that it doesn't have to be straight. And then picking them up on that big stamp um, means that they can go back in exactly the right place. Now this is the anti-static pouch that's um, wiping over the white cardstock so that when I place the embossing powder it's not going to go in places that we don't want it. Putting a piece of scrap paper underneath and then inking up the stamp with the Versamark glue. So really hard to know what you've um, got it on because you can't see through it like uh, you can't see it like you can see ink when you put ink on stamps. And likewise you can't see it on the white daisy either. So I'm really pressing hard to make sure I've got a really good transfer of the glue onto the stock cardstock. And then sprinkling white embossing powder over all of it 
and making sure it's a very generous amount so that I can shake it around and get it stuck to everything that's sticky from the glue and then shake off the excess onto the scrap of paper and pour it back into the jar. So there is a little bit left on the mat and I will put the lid on the jar and wipe the mat before I do anything else. Um, it's incredibly easy to spill this stuff and it's really hard to tidy it once it's stuck. So you can see here with the heat treatment that it's just changing the powder into a kind of a white gloss. Um, I absolutely love watching this process happen, it's so exciting. So you can see there that it's all basically disappeared but when I turn it to the light you can see the shine on it. So I assure you it is there even though you can't see it right now and you'll see it come out when I do this blending brush manoeuvre. So I'm going to use um, five, I think I use five different colours starting with jade and when you use the blending brush on the white cardstock it will uh, stick to the cardstock but not to what we've just embossed. So you'll see how the words that I've embossed um, become clear as I go over the top of them with different colours. So my thinking is that this is going to be a bit of a rainbow going up the page and um, along the bottom you can see Gracie's name coming out now um, as I put the toffee ink in and then I'm going to change to shortbread and I'm using shortbread so that it's a little bit lighter where I will be journaling and also it's a, a lighter shade um, just like the dogs are. Now I don't need to do too much on the right hand side as I go up this bit because um, that big 6x6 square photo will be sitting there but I do want it to be on the right hand side of it and also along the bottom. So then I'm changing to a ballerina bringing in some pink because she's a girl and again coming in from both sides and trying to keep it even on the way up. I'm hoping I'm going to get three lines of the green, so at the bottom and the top and in the middle, with two full sets of the other four colours in between. But I will work my way up gradually, and you can see now that the happy birthday is coming out as well. So once I've finished those, I'll grab my chamois and just rub it over the white letters and that gets off any residual ink that may have um, got on there when I was using the blending brush and so you can see there that it sticks out really cool um, and nice and shiny against the different colours. So again I'll bring the pictures in just to check that we've got everything right and it's safe to keep going but before I ink up the top with the blending brush I want to do some decorating in the same embossed style so I'm just checking the different stamps and I haven't decided what I'm going to emboss yet but I do like this number two balloon. So I'm going to cut a piece of that out of ballerina and then stamp it also with ballerina and I think that will blend in quite nicely with the pink in the page and bring a little bit more up from the bottom left. So stamping on the thin cut once I've cut it out and then I'm going to use the gel pens just to put a little bit of white in the parts. They are part of the stamp, which is really cool. So it just helps to give them a little bit of dimension. And then because the outline of the stamp is quite close to the edge, I'm going to go around the outside with my pink marker um, so that it doesn't look quite so stamped. And it also gives it a bit more of an outline so it stands out more from the background. While I was finishing up that number two, I decided I would stamp and cut out this dog because I just love the stamp and he does look like a golden retriever. So I'm going to pick him up on my big stamp and then attach the glue to him again like I did in the ones down the bottom. I'm making sure I get good coverage because he's got little wisps of fur. And I'll also go over the cardstock with the anti-static pouch so that we don't get any stray bits where we don't want them. So once he's stuck down, I'll tip the white embossing powder again over the top and tip it off onto the um, scrap paper after giving it a good jiggle to make sure we've got some good coverage. So there's no rush 
to um, heat him so I'll take the time to put the powder back in the bowl and put the um, lid on it and then dry him off and heat him with the, uh, with the heat tool. So you won't be able to see him change because it's white on white so you might see a little bit of shine here and there but when I go over it with the blending brush and the toffee ink, oh I think I'm using shortbread actually not toffee, then you'll see uh, the shape of him come out. So I'm going around the outside as well as his inside and where the embossing powder is a little bit raised you end up with a sort of a shadow effect because the ink is naturally darker when it's around the um, outside of the powder. So then I can fussy cut him out, unfortunately he didn't come with a thin cut so I have to do it the old fashioned way and cut him out so that I can then pop him on some raised um, 3D tape probably when I put him onto the page. So he looks quite cool, I'm not sure where he'll go yet but I'll find somewhere so I'll pop him to one side. I'll bring the page back and I've decided to put paw prints up this right hand side. So I'll bring the photos back in to see where I want them to start and I'm going to tuck them underneath that big square photo so it looks like um, the paw prints are just kind of going up the page. So again rubbing that section with the anti-static pouch and then this is a smaller stamp so I can uh, tap the stamp on top of the glue pad and then I need to um, keep an eye on where I'm at because it's very hard to see where the glue has gone so that you know where you've got to put the next bit so I end up just doing a little finger mark so I know where I'm up to and then taking the photos off putting the scrap paper back sprinkling the white embossing powder again over the top jiggling it around to make sure we get good coverage of those paw prints tipping it off onto the white scrap paper and then putting it back into the bowl now this is the last piece of embossing so I'll screw that paper up now and throw it away put the lid on the embossing powder so it doesn't spill wipe the stamp off and get rid of the mat then I can use the heat tool to bring these paw prints out and dry them off and again I won't show you the whole process because it's white on white so you won't see it until I come across with the ink. So I'm back to the jade colour ink and I now need more on the right hand side than I do on the left so it's still going to look like stripes going up the side um, but I'll go from the jade to the toffee a little bit on the left and then more on the right and you can gradually see those paw prints coming out of their um, camouflage background so then a little bit of shortbread which is just a little bit lighter I do use the same brush for tones of colors so it's not a completely clean brush for the shortbread it does have a little bit of toffee on it but I don't really think that matters particularly in this situation and the same with the ballerina and the pixie it's just the same brush because they're different shades of pink uh, I do have to push quite hard with the ballerina because it's such a faint light um, pretty color now with the pixie and the the measurements are going to work really well for a thin line of uh, the green at the top so that'll give me the three uh, lines of green that I was after at the beginning. If you saw last month's video for Stamping Like It's Hot you will have seen the ombre style done with the inks and this is um, ombre style just done with the blending brushes over the top of the white embossing powder so similar but different. So once I've finished doing the inking I can get my chamois out again and just bring out the whiteness of those paw prints and then I'll bring the jade piece back into the background and putting the photos back on um, it's starting to look the way I had planned which is pretty cool. Before I stick anything down I'll just decide where this dog's going. I think he can go there and number two can go up there. So rather than try and fit the dog on um, the gappy bit I'm going to extend him over into that negative space in the photo and I'll uh, 
adhere both the two and the dog with some 3D foam tape and just lift them a little bit from the page and that adds an extra dimension uh, to the layout as well. So then I can stick everything down. I'm really interested to see what other people come up with for um, this month's Stampy Like It's Hot and of course with the um, paper crafting YouTubers and the animal in April. And just before I stick the white daisy down onto the jade, I realize I haven't taken the middle out of it. So I'll go away and quickly gut a big square out from the background because if you haven't heard, Close to My Heart is closing, so getting this colour again might be tricky. I hope you get a chance to try this um, embossing technique and also the ombre ink. It's really uh, fun to do and quite effective. I did my journaling off camera and so when I came back with that, I realised I hadn't stuck the dog down yet. So while I'm sticking him down, I'll just thank you again for coming to my channel and having a look today. I really appreciate all, everybody who has subscribed in the past and all your comments and likes and everything that come um, underneath. It's really much appreciated. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you on board. So um, perhaps today's the day you click that button. So this 3D tape on the dog needs to go in all his little uh, bits that stick out because we don't want anything to be collapsing on the page. I've also decided that I don't need to mount any of these photos. I think the jade outline around the outside of the um, layout is enough. And so I'll pop this dog down and then the only thing that's left is to add a little bit of bling. So I've got a couple of little silver gems and I'm just going to follow the lines on the two that I did with the white gel, gel pen. So just adding a little bit to the reflection of light that you imagine might be coming in there. And then one either side of the happy and we're done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, really nice to have you here and happy crafting everyone.